Hey, what's up? It's Mr. Barnes. I got my goofy outfit on because it's, uh, it's Disney day here at Brent. And I'll tell you what, even though I look ridiculous, it's much better than wearing a tie. So I've got my population and transition unit open. And if we scroll down here, we get down to population three, we'll look at population three B today. We are going to look at internal migration. So we're asked to look at internal and international. So the, the, the two would be like national and international. Today we're going to look at internal migration and specifically we're going to look at China's internal migration. What happened in China is people were moving from urban areas to rural areas and it's said here in this uh, internal migration PowerPoint that was because of Mao Zedong's Cultural Revolution, you can, uh, you can take a look at this PowerPoint, scroll down and you see Chairman Mao down here. Uh, he, he wanted to regulate and control migration and so he wanted to, to move people more, I guess, spread them out better in the country. He wanted to move them into the, uh, the urban areas and so that's what happened. In the 1950s he moved people into the, urban, or the, the, the rural areas and that was the, the main internal migration. Once um, communist China uh, began industrializing in the 1970s, they relaxed their laws on uh, foreign companies coming in and, and using their uh, large population and, and using their workforce. And, um, and so there was a need for people that uh, had previously lived in, in rural areas to move to urban areas and so the the migration within China reversed in fact and so what happened was all of these farmers who were living on let's say two dollars a day could make a lot more money uh, if they moved into the cities and so that's exactly what happened internal migration within China you can see here the the urban percent increased uh, over time and and anything past here is just a prediction but um, I mean they're predicting that the the urban population is only going to get much bigger and so uh, I don't know about 90 percent but you can see that at least the, the statistics that we have right now it's uh, it's increased over time and that's because of the rapid industrialization of, of China now your assignment, you can, you can read the rest of this, there's a couple more uh, points to be made and actually I don't want to give you too much but your answers to your assignment might be in here somewhere so uh, you can take a look at that. But uh, if you go back to the, the assignment, basically what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to look at the, uh, this is positive social impacts, negative social impacts positive environmental impacts, negative environmental impacts, so on and so forth. Or excuse me, those are economic impacts. Um, what I'd like you to do is, because you're supposed to look at uh, impacts at the origin and destination, I need you to, to fill in this chart. And uh, some of these things that, you, that you, you see here, you might be able to fill in on your own. So for example, let me just fill one in. Negative environmental impacts at the, uh, the, the destination. Obviously, if there's going to be an influx of migrants from the rural areas to the urban areas, there's going to be uh, an increase in pollution. Increasing pollution in the cities. Okay. Also, increasing traffic congestion because if there's more people um, there's going to be uh, a greater chance for there to, to be higher traffic congestion. You guys can go through the rest of this chart. What I'd like you to do again is to look at these videos, a lot of great videos. In fact, uh, the recommended videos are, are even better. So for example, I clicked on this one and the, the tough times for China's children, the, the, the migrant children that have been left behind by their parents. Um, I watched this video just to refresh my memory. And uh, I looked down here and there was a, a video from The Economist, which is one of my favorite news sources. I clicked on this and this video right here 
goes through all of the, um, the things that, that we're going to be looking at. So for example, you can see this is, uh, this is Hong Kong. Uh, Chinese migrants have increasingly moved to the, the Hong Kong area, the Pearl River Delta, where uh, rapid industrialization has happened and more factories are, being, uh, are producing um, goods there. But uh, yeah, if you watch this video, it's an excellent video that, that gives you uh, a, a good idea of what's going on in China and in, in their, uh, their industrialization. And um, it will help you, actually, at the end of it, near about two minutes, it's not a long video, it gives you answers to how you would fill in your, uh, your chart here. And so take a look at these things. Search around. You can even search news articles that are that are current news articles, um, and uh, and read these ones here. And then uh, you can fill in the chart. So again, tough times for children left home by migrant workers. That means that the social impact of the uh, the the origin is. I'll fill in one more here. Negative social impact at the origin is that uh, family values. Family values are at stake. So what happens when you're not raised by your parents and you don't see your parents maybe only once a year or twice a year, right? So you're going to have some, some negative social consequences there. So again, hope I'm not forgetting any, getting anything. Uh, you can watch these videos, read these articles, and fill in the chart, and then we'll go over the, uh, the answers to these questions. Go ahead and try and answer these questions yourself. This one here and this one here, the 15 mark question. I've already talked about how to answer one of those, so you should have a good idea there. But uh, that's pretty much it for now, and then once we get a little bit further on, we're going to look at international migration. The, the first thing we'll look at is Mexico's migration to the United States, Mexicans to the US, and then also uh, overseas Filipino workers, OFWs, because we're in the Philippines and it makes sense to look at, uh, study things that are uh, directly relevant to where we're living. One last thing before I forget, always be sure to read through the lines, make sure that uh, you're able to evaluate things properly. In that, uh, in this PowerPoint that I showed you, remember I showed you that uh, the urban population is increasing and they're saying that based on current statistics, it's going to continue to increase. So these are projections here and they're saying that the, the urban population is going to grow. But if you watch the, uh, the Economist video, it says that these provinces right here are in fact becoming more popular for urban migrants to move into rural areas, there's this sort of switch from, from the, the coastal cities where most of the migrants are, are working because of the factories along these coastal cities. Uh, they're now saying that the coastal cities are, are losing people because it's too expensive now because of uh, inflation and the, the way that China has um, improved their GDP. It's too expensive for businesses to run factories on these coastal cities and so they're moving them inland. And so again, if you see things like this where, I mean, 80%, 90%, those are just huge numbers, that's a prediction. And so you got to be able to read through those lines. Don't just take everything for granted. Don't just accept this as, as truth. Remember to question all of these statistics, where they're coming from, the sources, and you can see it has the source here. So this was in 1998. And uh, if you look at this video, this video was posted in 2012. And so, yeah, be sure to do that as well. Make sure you're reading through the lines and making up your own mind. And I uh, hope this has helped. Hope this gives you a good idea. Fill in this chart. And happy Disney Day. <laughs>